Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 27, 2021, recorded around 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but a look at when more favorable conditions will be setting up across the Atlantic Basin over the next several weeks. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not much is occurring right now across the basin. We had a disturbance in Vest Area 90L, which really did not develop into much as just very unfavorable conditions across the region prevented much of development. But that eventually moved into portions of Georgia, and now this remnant energy is going to just kind of meander and move off the coast of the Carolinas once again. But no subsequent development is expected uh, from there. And we do right now have a couple of tropical waves in the Atlantic Basin and one down here in the Caribbean. None of these are expected to develop over the next several days. And a look here at the tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Nothing expected as of 2 p.m. over the next five days for the Atlantic Basin. However, we do have some systems uh, of interest here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, but both of these will be staying well away from land, and there is no subsequent then concern uh, for land impacts to uh, any part of Mexico or the Baja Peninsula uh, from any of these tropical systems. So these should both be moving well away uh, from land and not be of any significant concern. What is interesting though, however, this is the sea surface temperature anomaly map. This updated as of this morning, uh, or I'm sorry, as of yesterday rather. And we do have a couple of interesting things to kind of note across the, both basins right now. Starting off in the equatorial Pacific, mainly the Nina 3-4 region, which is here. We notice that the cooler than normal sea surface temperature anomaly pattern has returned as we are likely heading once again back into a La Nina uh, by the time we get into the winter time and by the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, certainly by September and October. We also notice that again, we kind of have these transverse waves right here. And these are little kind of waves of uh, cooler pockets here of water that move across and ripple ac across the basin. And these are responsible. Uh, again, uh, these are a, a matter of fact because we have some pretty strong easterly winds occurring across the basin right now. And these are kind of rippling across like waves. You have like literal waves you can see. And then there's temperature gradient waves, which also can create some instability. Uh, but by and large, we have cooler than normal sea surface temperature uh, pattern setting up back across the Nino 3-4 index, uh, really only above average with the Nino 1-2, which is right here. But this is not really relevant as this doesn't count towards the, the ENSO state. And then we also have cooler than normal sea surface temperatures extending off the coast of California all the way to the southeast part of Hawaii and to the central Pacific. And what this has really done over the last several weeks is we notice that the, the eastern Pacific basin has mainly been really locked down. And that is because, again, these cooler sea surface temperatures here uh, result in a very unfavorable background state uh, the further west you go. And so really the only part you can actually get hurricanes to form is right here. And of course, you know, some uh, off the coast there of the Baja, uh, which is above average, but not exceedingly so. And when you have a spatial limiter, it really drops the vertical shear across the Atlantic. Now, right now, we have some pretty strong shear, which we'll talk about here in a moment, but that is a result, not of a result of a very active Eastern Pacific, but as a result of Northern Latitude systems impacting the vertical shear distribution in the Atlantic. And speaking of the Atlantic Basin, the sea surface temperature anomaly pattern again, we are warming up quite nicely at this point. Most of the basin is pretty much at uh, the long-term average, maybe some slightly above, especially in the southern part of the MDR, that uh, Atlantic Nino is now coming back on fairly strong. And we remember how the Atlantic Nino was actually weaker a couple of weeks ago. And what that was a result of, we saw some of that warmth get translated vertically uh, northward and it impacted the warming in the main development region, especially in the southern part. So uh, we have seen some... Uh, you know, impacts as a result of this very strong Atlantic Nino. And we also notice that there is a very strong North Atlantic part of this component where the Northern Atlantic is quite above the long-term average. And this sets up a nice blocking ridge of high pressure, allowing systems to travel further west and coming off at lower latitudes like they are this year. This is certainly a big yikes pattern uh, for the remainder here of the season.
So is there anything ongoing across the basin right now? Well, thankfully, no, but there's always a catch to this. So what we're looking at here is the Kelvin wave uh, predictor here. This is valid as of 1 a.m. this morning or 2 a.m. this morning. What we're looking at here, we got a very strong uh, phase here of the positive convectively coupled Kelvin wave. And this produces negative velocity potential anomalies. And what does negative velocity potential anomaly means? This is all upward moving air in the atmosphere over the central part of the Atlantic Basin. This will, in fact, move over the Atlantic and or move over Africa, rather, uh, within the matter of a couple of days. And this could create something interesting where we get amplified waves that come off of Africa. We may just be able to squeeze out something very brief in this area as it passes through. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. But then right on its heels, we got a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave moving over the eastern Pacific and then moving over into the Atlantic. So uh, really, the development chances here will be very short-lived. And another thing going with that, this is the Madden Julian oscillation forecast. So this was the Kelvin wave forecast. And Kelvin waves move quicker. They're often quicker and on a much smaller scale than Madden Julian oscillations. Madden Julian oscillations, or MGO for, uh, MJO for short, basically is a larger and slower process than a Kelvin wave. And these often influence uh, months or even years of global weather. And what we can look at here is, again, basically the same kind of color coding as the last. Uh, all of these, uh, you know, blues and pinks and cyans, this is all upward moving air. And all these kind of, you know, oranges and reds. Uh, these, this is all basically sinking air and we have a lot of sinking air over Africa at the moment. And if we actually kind of look again over Africa, we notice that it is still pretty coupled with the convection across here. There is still uh, a pretty good amount of convection that is across there. And if we move uh, even further over Africa, we can see that again, we still have, you know, convection in these tropical waves that are moving across here. So it's not completely shut down, but very unfavorable environment out here, at least for the time being. But again, we notice that the Mount and Julian oscillation will pass into the Atlantic Basin. will stay over the Eastern Pacific for the next couple of weeks. And this is why I believe that the Eastern Pacific will be lit up with activity, at least to some extent. But then this moves over Africa and over the Western Hemisphere and moves over Africa here by about the mid middle part of August, about the second week of August or so. And at that time, it does appear that uh, we will have a better chance at tropical cyclone genesis after that point. Now, the GFS forecast uh, does not represent this. And the GFS forecast indeed keeps this area shut down with the Madden Julian oscillation still propagating over here. But it doesn't move over into the Western Hemisphere and over into the Atlantic. This is likely a GFS bias, not necessarily representative of what is likely to happen. So if we look here at the GFS 850 vorticity map, again, this has been the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. For context here, these darker oranges and reds, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. Uh, this is the GFS 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We notice again, we have a few tropical waves down here, a little bit of energy associated there, but not too much. Again, this is kind of the remnant energy of invest area 90L, not really expected to do much. And again, we kind of look over the Atlantic Basin for the next while, maybe something trying to develop there in the very long range, uh, latter part of August. Again, there's a tropical cyclone symbol down there. Maybe something trying to develop here on the GFS forecast this is well out in time, though. This is, I didn't really wasn't even uh, keen on that, but this is about the uh, hour 258. So that's really far out in time at this point. Not really even worth like looking out that far. The one thing I do want to look at here is the 200 millibar wind pattern. And this kind of goes to show that there's still going to be unfavorable conditions for at least some time. We notice that we have a high amplitude flow over kind of the middle part of the Midwest United States. Again, amplifying ridge here and kind of sends a, a kind of a pattern like that. So we have kind of an amplifying jet pattern across here. And we also know that we kind of have uh, this flow down here. This is a tropical upper trosphere trough, this tut right here. This is basically a big area of kind of this wind pattern that just is very unfavorable for tropical cyclone genesis at this point. And that kind of continues to be the case where 
we have kind of this flow pattern that kind of kinks around here and it causes a disruption in the overall flow across here. And you get these breakaways, you get the breakaways upper level highs and they eventually propagate southward under ridges of high pressure. And these are very notorious for producing a very strong vertical shear and nothing really that is able to develop. And if we continue to look out even further in time here on the GFS, we notice that the pattern doesn't really change much at all. Eventually the pattern though, by the end of the forecast period, I mean, this is our, you know, 384, but it just goes to show that again, the pattern at this particular time still hasn't changed all that much, but there's a little bit of a change, especially closer to Africa here. And if we kind of look here at the 850 millibar uh, pressure anomalies here, the MSLP anomalies, we notice that unfortunately, or really fortunately rather, we continue to deal with above normal pressure patterns. Now, this could be a GFS bias and not necessarily representative. If we go to the European, the European is actually a little bit stronger with that, but the European only runs out to about August 6th. And what we know is that the Mount Julian Oscillation will only begin to propagate into the Atlantic Basin uh, by about August 10th or so. So this doesn't really go out that far in time. The GFS forecast even only goes out to about August 12th. Uh, but then after that point, I think development chances will begin to increase uh, from there. So we'll be looking, uh, but in the in the short term, at least nothing as of right now, which is certainly good news. And I think it's going to stay that way uh, for the next couple of weeks. So nothing yet, but it will be coming. We will have things that will be uh, providing for additional increase in activity later into the month of August. All right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.